Good morning. Uh, I wanted to draw attention to a few, uh, well, I wanted to clarify a few things before I get into the body of what I'm about to say. I want to draw the distinction between health care and health insurance, because what we're talking about here is expanding Medicaid, which is a payment vehicle. Um, is it health insurance? I'm not really sure that I would call it that. Uh, it has no co-pays, no premiums, no deductibles. Um, I, I think it's more of a social welfare program, and I support social welfare programs. The question before us today is at what level? Um, I, I wanted to also mention that previous speakers had talked about the children. Well, children are covered under Medicaid, and also about the elderly. And elderly are covered under Medicare. And I wanted to just briefly touch on the origins of Medicaid, which is kind of really rooted in 1965. It was an afterthought to the Great Society. And Medicaid was originally designed for, uh, to be technically correct, the aged, the blind, the disabled. They called them the ABDs. They added then pregnant women. Various categories of people. And, you know, states were unable to set their own limits on what they covered. And we in Maine were fairly generous. And as you know, you know, this heat, this discussion goes back, or where I'm going to bring it back to is in 2001, we applied for a waiver to expand our Medicaid program. And in 2002, we received said waiver. And that waiver included a group of people who had not previously been categorized. And those are the ones that are off referenced as the non-cats. So I'd, I'd like to start from that. Um, you're no doubt aware that this is an issue that we've discussed here repeatedly under the guise of various things. Uh, I might also mention that serving as I do on the Health and Human Services Committee, this bill, the Managed Care Standalone Bill, 1487, came before us. And it was voted down 12 to 1. And the only reason that that one person voted for it was to give a member of his party who was the sponsor of said bill an opportunity to speak to it on the floor. Because I can tell you uniformly, that committee rejected managed care. You know, on the one hand, we've heard that this will be free, or that this Medicaid expansion will be free for three years. On the other hand, we've heard numbers running up into the 800 millions of dollars as to the state costs. I'd like to address some of the differences, uh, the fiscal differences, between the cost analysis that came from the office, OFPR, and the department. Um, I should first note that this bill contains a hard sunset. And what that means is that OFPR is then charged with only looking at three years, the term of the bill, for the costs. And many have said, and I've read it repeatedly, and it, I think it's been mentioned here today, that it's free. Um, the outlying years of the shares of the cost will go up. We will go from paying uh, zero percent ostensibly to ten percent. I'll just leave it at that. On your desk, I provided you with a departmental analysis uh, that will hi I'm going to highlight on a point by point basis. I've also included the analysis from OFPR. I got to apologize for burdening you with all these numbers, but I think it's incumbent upon you before you take this vote to understand the true costs. Uh, plus, I really like numbers and I do a lot of Sudoku. Um, OFPR's analysis, as was pointed out by the representative from Chelsea, uh, for the parent population, which had previously been expanded, okay, a population of some 14,978 individuals, contains a factual misstatement as to the current cost for those individuals, which, as Representative Sanderson mentioned, was actually $2,862 per member per year, not $1,618. Uh, that will result in a cost to the state of 17.8 million in fiscal year 16 and 18.7 in fiscal year 17. Um, OFPR also does not account for the, for the three months in fiscal year 15 in which those parents who had previously received what's called transitional Medicaid assistance will no longer receive those benefits. So the state is going to assume for, the, for that quarter from April 1st, 2000. 15 to, 8, to June 30th, 2015, the state will pay for that full amount. That's $4.2 million. OFPR disregards what is known 
uh, in the industry is the woodwork effect. Uh, that is a, a process whereby people who had previously been neither identified nor insured come out for this free insurance, coming out of the woodwork to receive benefits. We witnessed this when we expanded to the non-CAD population in 2001, and we, when we expanded the Medicaid savings plan and the Medicare buy-in plan. This population is assumed to be about 1,600 individuals, and it's going to cost the state $1.6 million in fiscal 15 and $2.3 million in each of fiscal 16 and 17. Okay, in the previous expansions, uh, there has been something called private drop. Now, private drop is something whereby individuals who are previously covered on private insurance move to Medicaid. And why not? It has no copay, no deductibles. If you look at the year of 2001, and you look then to 2009, you'll see that in 2001, 12% of our population was uninsured. In 2002, we expanded. In 2001, 14% of our population was on Medicaid. In 2001, 66% of our population was on private insurance. But if you jump to 2009, that 12% that was uninsured, we still have 12% uninsured. And while we had 14% on Medicaid in 2001, by 2009, we had 24% of our population on Medicaid. And in 2001, we had 66% of our population on private insurance. By 2009, it had dropped to 60%. What had happened? Private drop. The department estimates that 7,500 people will be added to the Medicaid rolls through private drop, and that it will cost $6.6 .6 million in each of fiscal 15, fiscal 16, and fiscal 17. The department further estimates that staffing costs will run about $2.5 million a year versus the OFPR estimate of $2 million a year. In addition, OFPR has estimated a cost for $3 million for fiscal 17 for childless adults, and the department anticipates that the true cost will be in the range for $9 million for that half year in which that rate is no longer available. Furthermore, OFPR assumes savings, and, and, and they do not cite the where, or the when, or the how of savings, of $5.9 million in fiscal 15, $11.8 million in both fiscal 16 and 17. Okay, Part C of the bill does contain some vague language, particularly as it relates to adult mental health services and substance abuse services. However, as these programs are primarily funded through federal block grants, any savings would not accrue to the state. Indeed, any shifting of federal block grants to the state uh, from existing program was cause states to lose federal block grant funding in an amount commensurate to the state shifted funds, and that's a direct quote from CMS. Given the lack of specifics and the lack of supporting documentation, the department can only conclude that no savings will be realized. The department estimates that the three year marginal cost of expansion, the first three years when it's free, is $83 million. $83.2 million, that's general fund dollars, okay? That's hardly free. OPR, OFPR estimates that it'll be $2.6 million, and this includes that undocumented non-supported savings. The reality is that OFPR acknowledges a minimum cost of $38 million over the first year. And ladies and gentlemen, George Centignana said it best when he said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And what of our past experiences with expansion? Over the past 11 years, the state has had to commit either through additions to the budget, financial orders, supplemental budgets, the following amounts to balance the Medicaid budget. In 2004, 71.4 million. In 2005, 160.7 million. In 2006, 71.1 million. In 2007 was a good year. We'd overappropriated, so we deappropriated 13.9 million. In 2008, it was 52 million. In 2009, it was 125.5 million. In 2010, it was 41.5 million. In 2011, it was 59.4 million. 
In 2012, it was 125.3 million. In 2013, it was 205.7 million. In the current year, it's 145.5 million. All of which adds up to just a touch over $1.3 billion. And this does not include the $485 million repayment to our, in our first session we made to our hospitals. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I would like to see this population, every population covered. I would like to see them provided with affordable access to health care. High quality health care at that. But expanding Medicaid, a poorly designed reimbursement system for our poorest population, is not the answer. We cannot add a third story to a house with a crumbling foundation. Nor can we afford to continue the relentless pursuit of federal dollars that comes with so many strings attached, especially when we have alternatives that are more fiscally and medically sound. I thank you for your time. The Chair recognizes Representative Berwick, Representative Plank. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I agree with the representative from Hancock. We do need to make sure we find a way to provide folks with health insurance, health care, however you choose to title it. That is indeed what we're talking about here in the objective of the Affordable Care Act. 